everybody. Welcome back to a little bit of everything. I'm Richard. Hope you're having a blessed day. Hey, on today's video, we're going to do something a little different. It's a cooking video, and I'm using the big green egg, but it's not pork or chicken or brisket. Today, we're making apple crisp. Okay. Apple crisp with vanilla ice cream. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> that is so good. Drop the mic. Hey there everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is a little bit of everything. I'm really glad you stopped by today. We have a special treat for you. As you saw in the intro, I'm going intro, I'm going to be making a um apple crisp today. Uh I've had several requests to do some more cooking on my egg, and I apologize for not getting any more of that done, but today, instead of cooking brisket or ribs or any kind of smoked corn or, or beans or something like that, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a, a dessert, and um, just a little bit of background about this dessert. I've made this dessert uh, a lot in the past. Um, I hadn't tried it on the smoker, and this past Memorial Weekend, we had some friends come over and I wanted to whip up a quick dessert to have with dinner and I thought, you know, since my smoker is already going, I'm just going to put it out there and um, that's where I cooked it and it was such a hit. As a matter of fact, uh, the next day after I served that, uh, we were out running around into town with my friends and family who had shown up and one of them came up to me and said, hey, if I buy the ingredients you need, will you make that for us again today? <laughs> so not only did I make it for him, but I showed him how to make it. So. Um, so it's, it's been a huge hit. Uh, so I thought I would go ahead and uh, make that for you today so that you could uh, have a dessert that you can use on your smoker. And, I, and putting it on the smoker really did add an element that um, I, I hadn't uh, got smoking it or cooking it in the oven. And that's something that I do want to tell you about this recipe is um, just because I'm putting it in a cast iron pan and then taking it out on the smoker, that doesn't mean you can't cook this in your oven. You can use a regular pie dish um, you need a deep one, but uh, you could use your regular, one of your last glass Pyrex dishes and put all the ingredients of that and cook it in your oven, and you're still going to get a really tasty uh, dessert. It just, that smoke flavor just adds a little something. If you don't like smoke flavor and nobody that you're serving likes smoke flavor, then maybe it's not best to put it on the, on the grill. But uh, today, and since I cook on the egg, I'm going to go, go ahead and put this on the egg. Um, I'm also going to be using my new fireboard... Um, uh, thermostat with the uh, uh, fan motor uh, blower on there and I'm going to try that today uh, to see if I can um, keep the uh, temperature uh, steady at 350 degrees which is what I need it to be in order to cook this so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to start going through uh, some of the ingredients here real quick and, and tell you what I uh, what I'm going to be doing and then um, we'll get started putting it together and I'll, I'll just walk you through every step it's really a nice day today. We had a lot of rain this morning um, and it's really kind of muggy, but it's nice. My um, table's covered because I'm just trying to keep it out of the, the rain and everything. But what I've done here is I've gone ahead and set up the fireboard. I have a grate clip right here uh, that's going to monitor the internal temperature inside the egg. There's the fan blower that is hooked up to the bottom vent in the uh, egg and you see the cord runs up here plugs into this. Now in my app, and I'll show you in a minute, I can set the temperature that I want this egg to cook at and that fan mower uh, blower will come on and go off and uh, do its best to maintain an internal temperature of 350 degrees inside the egg. It's the first time I've tried to use it so we're going to uh, we're going to attempt to use that uh, when I do this cook today but the first thing that I need to do is I need to get the egg loaded up and ready to go and get the coal started. So let's get that done. <music> Okay, so as you saw, we got the egg lit up. Um, 
So what I did was, is I went ahead and put the clip back in here. Again, that clip is attached to the fireboard. As you saw, the fireboard uh, fan is set to 350 degrees. So the fan is running, so you can hear it. It's running right now, and that will continue to run. It will monitor the temperature um, in the fireboard through that uh, probe, uh, through that the probe that I put on the grate there, that grate probe, it'll monitor the temperature through that and as it begins to get close to 350 degrees that fan will begin to slow down um, and it's the job of that fan to get this thing to 350 and hold it there. So while that's doing that, uh, let's go ahead and go inside and get started uh, putting together this uh, dessert. Okay, so I have two separate um, uh, items going on here. This is everything that's going to be the filling and then over here is everything that's going to be the topping. So we're going to go ahead and start with the filling first. Uh, I've got some, um, uh, there's eight Granny Smith apples here. I'm going to have the complete recipe for this down um, in the description. But, uh, so I won't be um, getting re -de uh, real detailed on everything that I'm putting in. I'll just walk you through as I build it and tell you what I'm putting in. But like I said, all the details will be in the um, in the description down below. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to peel, uh, core, and chop these apples up. So let's get that going. Now, if your apple, uh, if your peeler has one of these little um, holes on the end of it, I don't know if you know this or not, but you can use that to dig out bad spots. Just like that. Okay, so what I normally do is now that I have the apple in this um, configuration, I just go ahead and cut off the top and the bottom, lay it flat. And in this particular instance, since I don't have the, um, the tool to, to core it, I'll just go around the core, getting as close to it as I can, cutting it off to all I have left is the core. I throw those pieces away and then I take one of these chunks and I will cut it in half and then I will divide it like that. What you're looking for is a chunk that looks about like that. So that's what I'm going to do with the rest of these apples. Okay, so once you're done peeling all the apples, uh, you're left with this nice little um, collection of these, uh, you know, half inch by half inch chunk pieces of apple. So uh, once those are in there, you want to act kind of quickly because you can already tell some of these are starting to bruise. It doesn't take long for these apples to begin to bruise up. So the next step we're going to go ahead and get started on and I'll walk you through that. Yeah, great. But to this, um, I'm going to add some ingredients here and we're going to mix these up. So I'm going to be adding a half a cup of brown sugar. And then I'm going to be adding one quarter cup of honey and I want to point out something here this is some special honey um, sent to me by my cousin in alaska this stuff is uh, it's called working girls and she sent it to me this is raw and unfiltered alaskan honey um, this is i'm going to tell you what this is the best honey i have ever tasted in my life thank you jamie uh, my cousin jamie sent this to me and so as a consequence um, i use a little less sugar uh, because this uh, this just really sweetens it up so I'm going to go ahead and, and get this, this honey put in here. Uh, normally I try to warm this so that um, it mixes a little better, but um, I didn't do that this time. So uh, after that, I'm going to be using two and a half teaspoons. And let me get my teaspoon here. I want to talk just a second about this. Uh, I'm using this uh, Jack Daniels um, apple, Tennessee apple uh, bourbon. This stuff right here... Um, so I don't want you to be afraid to use um, whiskey. So here's the thing, this stuff is going to burn off really, really fast. 
And what you're going to be left with is the smoky sweet flavor that this, this really enhances the flavor of those apples. Um, you, when you open this, I can just smell the green apple in this. Um, so I'm going to be using, let me get my teaspoons out here. Stand by. Two. and a half teaspoons of this um, Tennessee Apple Jack Daniels bourbon. This stuff is fantastic in cooking. A tablespoon of lemon juice. I only have the bottled stuff and I would prefer to have a fresh lemon here, but I don't have a lemon. So um, I'm going to use this even though it's not my favorite thing to do. It's a fresh lemon just is better. I'll just leave it there. Um, then we are going to go with a one and a half teaspoons, and I just kind of eyeball this, of cinnamon. That's about one and a half. There we go. Uh, then I want to get a teaspoon of vanilla. That's about a teaspoon. And then I'm going to use some special salt. This is smoked salt, but you can use whatever salt you want. But I just want a pinch of salt in there. And then what we're going to do is we are going to mix this up. Make sure everything is good and coated in this bowl. And that is it for the filling. So let's move on to the topping. Okay. So I didn't mention it before, so I'm going to go ahead and mention it now. Um, obviously, you do not have to have Alaskan honey for this recipe to be good. You can use whatever honey you have on hand. Um, I just happen to have that stuff and it just really helps enhance it. So we're going to go ahead and make the crumble topping now. So into this bowl, I'm going to put uh, two cups of all-purpose flour. And then on top of that, we're going to add one and one half cups of table sugar. Then we're going to add one, another half cup of brown sugar. Now, I know this has a lot of sugar in it. And like Matt Pittman always says, I'm not here to help you lose weight. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to beat a couple eggs. So let me get that. Make sure those are nice and beat. Okay, and in this little thing, I have two, two teaspoons of baking powder and a pinch of salt. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that to the mix. And the last thing you're going to need is this butter in a cup. Now you're going to melt this and pour it over the top right before you stick it on the, um, stick it on the stove, but, or in the stove or on the smoker or whatever. But I'm going to wait um, to do that and melt that here in just a minute. So the next step is, and I always use this fork to do this, I'm going to go ahead first and break this. This is my dry hand. Mix those together. Then I'm going to pour the eggs in here. And then immediately I'm going to start moving that around with this fork, just trying to get everything incorporated and it'll start crumbling up as you do this. A lot of people will stick their hands in here and do that. I, I just like doing it with a fork because you can see how it's crumbling. This is how you're going to make your topping crumble. Okay. I just move it around until the whole mix looks crumbly. Okay, we have that done. It's on to the next step. Okay, we have our nice crumbled up topping here. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix these up. You can see how some of that juice kind of settles to the bottom. Just mixing them up here. And I have a cast iron uh, lodge dish here. Now it says to butter this. I've never buttered this um, dish, but I have treated this so that I've got, uh, this is a real non-stick surface. Nothing's going to stick here, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you're using a Pyrex bowl and you're cooking this in your oven, I would suggest going ahead and buttering that uh, just to keep it from sticking. But 
The next step is to pour the apples right straight into that dish. And I like to use this spatula to get every ounce of that flavor out of that bowl. Just spread those around. And then this next step I do by hand. So we've got the, uh, we've got the apples in the bowl there. So the next thing I do is I just take the crumble and I stick my hand in and I grab it and I just pour it over the top. I try to get the apples laid down in there a little bit. I can control it a whole lot better by doing this by hand. I can make sure everything gets covered. And that way, if you have some of these bigger pieces, you can break those up a little bit better. Stick them back in the bowl. Sift it around a little bit. Break up some of those really big pieces. Because you really don't want a big floury, doughy piece of and this way I can kind of get it into the nooks and crannies and the corners. Make sure all of the apples are covered. Now there's nothing saying you have to use every ounce of this topping. If you get it, it just depends upon the size of your casserole dish that you're using. Um, I've only ever made this in a uh, cast iron dish, even if I cook it in my oven. I cook it in a cast iron dish. I just love the way it cooks in these. So there you go. There's the crumble on top of that. So that is it. So what we're gonna be doing next is we will um, melt down the butter and I will pour the butter all over the top of this and then we'll take it out to the egg. So this part is not in the recipe. I mean, the butter is, but let me just show you, this is what I do right before I get ready to go put it on the cooker. And by the way, the cooker's ready. I know there's a cup and a half of sugar in here and a whole cup of brown sugar. What I do is, and I've noticed this kind of helps caramelize the top, is I just sprinkle on, and I do mean sprinkle, a thin layer of sugar across the top. And because I love cinnamon, I sprinkle a little bit more across the top. Not much, because cinnamon is powerful. Okay, that, those two steps are not in the recipe. Those are something that I just do when I make mine. Uh, I don't include them in the recipe simply because, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like that much sugar or what have you. So um, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys what I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Get this butter mixed up. I pour this over the top. Make sure I get some in the corners. Try to get it, cover most of everything. Okay, now this is ready to go on the smoker. Okay, as you can see, the uh, Fireborn has done its job. The temperature is steady at 357 degrees. There's that crisp. So let's get this opened up. Let's get this in there. All right, the crisp is sitting right in the center. We're gonna go ahead and shut this. Okay, I just wanted to show you <clears throat> that the fans kicked back on. Uh, there's a feature on this, it's called lid, and if you lift the lid up and it notices that the lid has gone up, <clears throat> it'll give it a minute or two to, to settle the temperature back up, and if it doesn't, do it quick enough, it'll automatically kick on to start driving the temperature back up. So you can see it's at 311. Uh, the fan is kicked back on. It's uh, raising the temperature up to 350. Once it gets up there, it'll stop. But uh, now we have an hour. It's roughly an hour. I will come out here in 45 minutes and I will check it just to see what it looks like. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, we've got it on the grill and we're, all we have left to do now is wait. Okay, so it's about ready to check. But one thing I wanted to come out here and show you is this has been going for 40, almost 45 minutes and you see it's set at 350. This fan keeps coming on and going on and off. 
I'm telling you what, this thing is awesome. It has kept the temperature on this egg. There it is, there's the fan. It has kept this temperature on, on this egg dead at 350 degrees for this entire cook. And I, I've been watching it on the app and there's just these subtle adjustments that the fan makes as the temperature starts to go down a little bit. And you'll notice that the vent below is completely closed except for that fan motor. And I have the top vent just barely open right there at the top. So um, it, it knows how much air it needs in order to be able to continue to uh, keep the temperature uh, where you've got it set. And I've got that, you can see the, the, um, the probe that I have clipped onto the grate in there. It's just done a marvelous job. I just wanted to shout out to Fireboard. What a great tool. Yes. I'm getting ready to check it right now. So I'm gonna open this up and take a look, see where we're at. Oh, it's nice and brown and getting crispy. I'm still gonna let it go for another 10 or 15 minutes though. All right, it's time to get this bad boy off the grill. Take a look at that, <laughs> beautiful. Okay, there it is, nice and golden brown. It's all cooked through. It was on there for about 50 minutes total. I'm gonna let it cool here and then I'm gonna take a bite. We'll test it here in just a second. Okay, here's the fun part. Now we get to try it. Oh, I know this is gonna be good. So let me just get a little piece right here, make sure I get some apple in there. Whew, still really, really hot. Oh. The smell is incredible. Mm. Boy, you can really taste that um, that apple um, that apple bourbon flavor. Once the alcohol burns off, you get left behind that really rye apple flavor that goes that really accentuates the the flavor on those apples. That crisp is really, really crunchy. And the, uh, the sugar that I put on top of it did exactly like I wanted it to. It caramelized the top, so you get that, hear that? Crispy top on the top. I'll tell you what, if you make, for the, make this for your family, you're, you're gonna be a very popular person, I promise you. And uh, Randy Fayette, if you're watching, here's a brand new fresh one, come on down. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you really uh, enjoyed this and uh, if you like it, uh, like the video I'm doing, like and subscribe. Uh, I'd love to have you uh, comment and, uh, and stay engaged with me. So I'm going to transition now to the faith portion of my video. I really appreciate you showing up. Apple crisp, it's what's, it's what's for dinner. Talk to you soon. Hello everyone, I'm Richard. Welcome back to Faith Changes Everything. If you've not been here before, uh, this is the portion of my video where I talk about Christ, I talk about God, I talk about Bible verses, I talk about all, thing, uh, all things God, and uh, I'm really appreciative of you taking your time here. Um, I will be uh, mindful of your time because I know that this is uh, kind of a long video, but I appreciate your, you're here. And if you're still here, you know, just thank you very much. Um, I do have another verse from the Bible that I want to talk about. You know, if you want to pause the video and head over to the Bible <clears throat> or your Bible app, uh, go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And that verse says, <clears throat> excuse me, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. You know, so recently a life coach of mine sent this verse to me. And because of some of the things that we were discussing, he thought this was an appropriate verse. Um, at the time, he heard it in a message at church, and he sent that to me because he was thinking of me. See, that's God speaking to us. I mean, someone who's helping me manage my life hears this message, and then he thinks of me. You know, that's God speaking to us. Anyway, he sent me this verse, and as a result of my time looking into the verse, today's <clears throat> message basically just kind of wrote itself, actually. Um, but because some of you might have the same question on how do I put myself in a position to be able to stand before God in his likeness and transform my heart and renew my mind to ready my soul for my spiritual journey and walk with Christ, 
And so as I began to see what was being reflected back to me, as I looked to uncover the meaning here, I thought that you too might benefit from what God has spoken to me. So let me just go ahead and begin. So as believers, you know, we've been called to personal conviction where our lives are a reflection of Christ and our bodies a living sacrifice to the Lord. It is our spiritual worship and our reasonable service to yield our lives, ourselves, our bodies to the Lord, to to dedicate ourselves to him each and every single day. You know, the fallen world and the sinful man is all too ready to squeeze us into its own mold and cultivate us in a worldly mindset where God is far removed from our conscience. Our own sin nature, it rebels against the spirit who dwells within and the spirit looks to lean on our fallen fleshly desires. But Paul warns us not to be conformed to this world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of our minds. You know, this daily transformation process where we're being changed from glory to glory into the image and likeness of Christ as we abide in him and he in us, you know, this is a lifelong pursuit, a lifelong process that requires vigilance at all times because Satan desires to shipwreck our faith and render our testimony without merit, either by stroking our ego or causing us to become fearful. Because God did not give us a spirit of fear. It is the great deceiver that tries to abide in us, and lies to our heart and our minds, and tries to make us believe that we're out here alone. He preys on our learned fears and promotes his deceptive agenda. Do not take this lightly. He is a deceiver and a murderer and has been from the beginning. And we need to put on the armor of God day by day if we're to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. You know, the sin nature is programmed to be conformed to the world, but allowing the Holy Spirit to live in us, to work through us, it transforms our minds. It removes doubt. It pushes out unholy thoughts, and it replaces sin with a powerful transformative renewing of our minds so that our thoughts are influenced by the mind of Christ as the desire of his heart becomes our own desire and delight, and his perfect will is translated into our will. Day by day, rededication of ourselves to his service is a lifelong program, which we need to choose consciously. Transformation does not take place overnight, let me reiterate, but is dependent on the hidden values of the heart being translated into the active practice of our thoughts and motives. It is a free will choice to reject that which is evil and to honor the Lord in beautiful thoughts, beautiful words, beautiful deeds, by choosing to do what is right and what is holy. The Holy Spirit alone is that one that implements our inner transformation. He is the one that causes us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He carries out this refining work in the inner recesses of our hearts so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. How important, therefore, to keep our focus on Jesus and to train the eyes of our hearts on heavenly things that are true and honest, just, pure, lovely, and wholesome. How necessary to capture every thought that casts a shadow on our mind and reject every motive that dishonors our Savior and allow them to be filtered through the lens of his purifying process and refining fire. Wow. I just get chills sometimes. <laughs> just, you know, how true is it that you become whatever has captivated your heart and inevitably reflects attitudes and behaviors in life, whether they're good or evil? We are what we eat, right? And too often it is not a pretty sight. You know, we're warned not to habitually be immersed in the world, but to set our minds on the Lord Jesus Christ and make him the central focus of all of our thoughts. <clears throat> you know, if we would just turn our spirit and soul toward the Lord Jesus we would automatically, we would automatically have to turn away from the things of this world. And if each one of us set our heart, our mind, our will, and our affection to concentrate upon him of necessity, we would not be conformed to the lustful leanings of the world, but our new born again nature would start to be supernaturally transformed into the character of Christ. The evidence of this lovely transfiguring process is not only an outward disassociation from the ungodly world and the works of the world, the flesh, the devil, but a life that is good, acceptable, perfect, and pleasing to the Father. But note that transformation is perfected through trials, difficulties, suffering, and sorrow, which many of you may be experiencing today in your lives. Go to God with a thankful heart that he continues to work in your life. 
providing you with opportunities to grow and become dependent on his love and his guidance as you navigate these difficult waters. God is always there giving you strength because he wants to teach you. He wants you to go to him with everything and leave it there. Leave it with him to help you walk this path. So I'm going to finish with a prayer. <clears throat> Loving Father, too often my mind is deflected from Jesus onto the things of the world, especially when times are difficult. But I want to keep my mind on Christ, knowing that this is your best will for me. I pray that I become increasingly aware of the Spirit's promptings in my life so that day to day my heart and mind become saturated with the lovely Lord Jesus. May his nature be reflected through my actions and attitude, and may my life be transformed daily by the renewing of my mind. Help me to prove in my life that your will for me is, and may I do only those things that are good and acceptable and perfect in your sight, for your praise and glory, and for the benefit of others. This I ask in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to spend with me here. I so appreciate all your time, comments, and reactions to all of my videos. You know, if you'd like to continue to hear words encouragement and continue to spend time in the Word, <clears throat> I encourage you to seek out a local church. You know, Bible study classes to connect with Christ through a local church and, and fellowship with those in that congregation. That'll help strengthen and lift your faith upwards. And as always, I would be honored if you would like and subscribe and I will keep on putting out this content for as long as you'll, you'll listen to me. But don't forget, as always, God loves you so very much, and so do I. Until next time.